This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to finish initializing our units when they are first created so that they can both um, take the actions that they're supposed to as their unit type as well as interact with the forest system as a whole. Now in order to do that, we're going to need to pass in not only the unit profile itself, like what the unit is going to become, but also a reference to the system itself so that the unit can then have a reference to that in the future. So we're going to pass that in as a second parameter here. We're going to pass in this, meaning the forest system. However, we'll see that that throws an error now because initialize isn't prepared to take that. So let's jump over to our unit script and set it up so that it can take both of these parameters and use them intelligently. So we're going to go back over to unit and looking into our initialize method here, we're going to change the method declaration itself a little bit by adding the parameter of forest system. And we'll simply call this, um, let's just call this forest. Now up here in our variables, we're going to want to be able to cache this um, reference to the forest so that in the future, after it's first created, it can still reference it. So let's delete this. Um, to do that we have here and we're going to say public forest system and we'll call it forest as well. So in the same way that we're applying the profile um, to the variable up here we're going to say this dot forest equals forest so that that parameter gets applied up here as well and now we can start actually creating um, our unit based on what it is like what its profile is and use some of the information from the forest as well. For example, um, we want to give these units a number. If you're the third rabbit being created, you want that to be indicated as well. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to delete this base name because we're going to do that a little bit more um, intelligently. But for now, we'll just delete that. And what we're going to do is we're what we do is really going to be based on the profile of the unit. If it's grass, we're going to do a few certain things in a certain way. If it's a rabbit or if it's a wolf, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So we're going to actually kind of do an if check and see which um, set of instructions we should use. So we'll say if profile equals forest dot grass profile. And here's the first spot where we need reference to the um, system because the system, remember, is storing kind of a catalog of these potential profiles. Then we're going to do a few things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set the name and we can in this case actually set the name directly. We don't need to use the base name in this case because as you'll see when we get into rabbits and um, wolves, their, their name is going to potentially update because they're consumers. But this one is always just going to be grass and the number of grass that have been previously created. So we're just going to say name equals, and in this case we'll say grass plus forest dot grass created. And it's going to be kind of static to that. So we can just establish that right in the game object's name itself, and that's never going to change in this case. So we can just leave that as is, and that's fine there. Next um, thing we're going to do is we're going to set the parent of this grass to be that grass holder. So we'll say transform.setParent to the forest.grass holder. Forest.grass created will get increased by one, and forest.grass count will be increased by one. else this might be a rabbit so we can say profile equals oops sorry else if profile equals forest dot rabbit profile here we're going to use that base name because like i say with rabbits and wolves we're going to track their hunger in their name as well and so we want to have a base name being the name plus whatever number they have associated with them, and then we can add to that their current hunger. So what we'll say here is base name equals rabbit plus forest dot rabbits created. 
And so that becomes that sort of, that's always going to be static in this case, but then from there we're going to update their hunger in real time. So next thing we'll do is we'll um, So we want to store that in a variable somewhere. Next, we'll again set the parent, this time to the rabbit holder, transform.setParent forest.rabbit holder. And then we'll do forest.rabbit's created plus plus and forest.rabbit count plus plus. Lastly, we're going to actually set the final name of this. So here what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually create a second method to set the name. So we're going to do that down here. We'll say void set name. And what will happen here is we'll say name, meaning the game object's overarching name will be equal to that base name plus parenthesis plus the current hunger of the unit plus a slash, plus the profile dot max hunger allowed, or max hunger before death rather, plus a clothing par closing parenthesis. And so this will simply show the name, meaning rabbit four is currently this hungry out of what it can possibly be for hunger. And we'll just simply in our back in our rabbit um, creation instructions here, we'll say set name. Now, one thing you may notice as I'm doing this is that there's a lot of duplicated code here. This is not optimal in terms of proper like code and uh, we're using a lot of public variables that should be encapsulated. We're also duplicating a lot of code here that would probably be better handled in sort of a common method that you pass in certain parameters to. Um, Possibly at the end of this series, I'll do like a refactoring where we optimize a lot of this stuff. But for right now, I don't want to distract from that. I just want to focus on creating the system itself is why I'm using kind of worst practices, if you will, on the coding side. So lastly, we're going to create the wolf. And in this case here, if it's not grass and it's not a rabbit, we know for sure it's a wolf. So we can just kind of assume that for now. Um, I'm going to copy all of this paste it into here because this is indeed all very common uh, code in this case. Uh, we're going to do wolf, name it based on wolves created, set the parent to the wolf holder, increase wolves created by one, increase the wolf count by one. And again we'll set the name so that they create based on hunger. And with that, our units are now ready to be created. So what we can do in our next video is start setting our system into motion where these units will be created and we'll start to see time moving forward. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.